The debate over the existence of free will has gone on for centuries between determinists and libertarians. Recently, Sam Harris wrote a short book in an attempt to sum up the arguments for determinism and make the case that we do not have free will. Free will is an illusion. Our wills are simply not of our own making. Thoughts and intentions emerge from background causes of which we are unaware and over which we exert no conscious control. We do not have the freedom we think we have. Free will is actually more than an illusion, or less, in that it cannot be made conceptually coherent. Either our wills are determined by prior causes and we are not responsible for them, or they are the product of chance and we are not responsible for them. If a man's choice to shoot the president is determined by a certain pattern of neural activity, which is in turn the product of prior causes, perhaps an unfortunate coincidence of bad genes, an unhappy childhood, lost sheep, and cosmic ray bombardment, what can it possibly mean to say that his will is free? Determinists like Harris strongly believe that free will is an illusion, and everything we think and believe has been determined by prior causes. So we are not responsible for our actions. Mikio Kaku sums up the implications of determinism like this. Newtonian determinism says that the universe is a clock, a gigantic clock that's wound up at the beginning of time, and it's been ticking ever since according to Newton's laws of motion. So, what you're going to eat 10 years from now, on January 1st, has already been fixed. It's already known using Newton's laws of motion. So is this true? Is everything we do completely determined by prior causes? Well, I would argue no. This argument is nothing new, and advocates of free will have long responded to it. The first thing to note is determinists like Harris seem to think that since we are unable to pick our past, our genes, our character, and various neurological factors, this means we do not have free will. Meaning I am only free if I get to choose these things. If I just find myself with an innate desire, then I am not free. However, there is a problem here. This is not what free will is. Advocates of free will have never concluded free will means we get to pick our past, our genes, our character, place of birth, and so on. What Harris has suggested is a much stronger type of freedom that no one advocates. In the article Bait and Switch, Alvin Plantinga responds to Harris and points out the difference between free will and a stronger sense of freedom he refers to as maximal autonomy. Harris's notion of freedom is really an idea of what we might call maximal autonomy. It is obvious we do not have maximal autonomy. We aren't free in that sense. Indeed, it isn't so much as possible that we be free in that sense. That is because as he thinks of it, I act freely on a given occasion only if I myself freely choose to have the desires and affections I then act on, and furthermore, I myself freely bring it about that I do have them. If Harris is right, it is possible that I act freely only if it is possible that I perform an infinite number of actions, each one a matter of bringing it about that I have a certain set of desires and affections. Clearly no one has time these busy days for that. Harris is certainly right that we do not have maximal autonomy, but nothing follows about having freedom, i.e. the sort of freedom we ordinarily think we have, the sort required for moral responsibility. What we have here looks like a classic bait and switch. Announce that you will show we do not have freedom in the ordinary sense, required by moral responsibility, and then proceed to argue that we do not have freedom in the sense of maximal autonomy. It is certainly true that we do not have freedom in that sense. Not even God could have that kind of freedom. That is because God could not have performed infinitely many actions. No doubt he could have, but because God is necessarily all-knowing, all-powerful, and perfectly good, this means that God has not freely chosen to have that character. There never was a time at which he had both the power to bring it about that he had that character, and also the power to bring it about that he did not have that character. Now Harris does spend most of the book arguing we do not have maximal autonomy, but he also argues, as do most determinists, that we do not have freedom in the ordinary sense meaning we are unable to make free decisions and everyday choices, and every choice we do make has already been determined. However, I don't think that is the case. The argument only provides the possibility for determinism. No direct link can be shown that our choices are directly the result of past events. If one has a reason for his actions, it doesn't automatically mean that reason caused his action. In understanding why we make certain choices, that doesn't mean we are unable to make choices at all. The determinists say the opposite, and we can't escape it. Where else could our choices come from if they are not the result of prior causes? I believe the philosopher Ayn Rand responded to this well, and though I would not agree with her on many things, the argument for free will is very well articulated. While determinists say choices are impossible and are the result of prior causes, Rand argued man's free choices come from focusing his mind, whether to focus it or not, how much to, and what to focus on. Man can keep his mind in full focus, drift away without focus, or avoid focusing and refuse to think. We can consider all relative facts and conditions and make a conscious effort to think of additional factors that might play a part. 
We obviously cannot make free choices on some knowledge we acquire, but our freedom is controlling what ideas and arguments to focus on, which allows us to select what we think is truth. So advocates for free will, like Rand, do not argue there are no reasons which motivate our actions, but that we are free and in control of what facts and ideas of the mind will focus on. So freedom is in focusing and thinking. As Ayn Rand said, a social environment can neither force a man to think nor prevent him from thinking. But a social environment can offer incentives or impediments. It can make the exercise of one's rational faculty easier or harder. It can encourage thinking and penalize evasion or vice versa. So advocates of free will have never argued our free will means we must have freedom in the sense of maximal autonomy. Instead, it is argued we have free will in the ordinary sense, which happens in the rational mind through processes of thinking and focusing. However, the most crucial piece of evidence for free will comes from the recent advancements in quantum physics. Though Ayn Rand can make a good case for free will, her belief that we can have free will in the realist objective world is false. Recently, Princeton mathematicians John Conway and Simon Cochin demonstrated their free will theorem, which states we can only have free will if we live in an idealist and deterministic universe, instead of a realist deterministic universe. So the quantum level must behave indeterministically, instead of working like clockwork determined atoms. There is no middle ground according to Conway and Cochin. Either we are free and the universe is indeterministic, or there is no free will and the universe is determined. However, recent advancements in quantum physics have demonstrated that the quantum level behaves in an indeterministic manner. Recent experiments by Anton Zellinger and others have demonstrated that intuitive features of realism must be abandoned. For years leading up to these recent experiments, determinists held on to hope that the collapse of the wave function in quantum mechanics was not really indeterministic and observer dependent, that there were hidden variables waiting to be discovered. These hidden variable theories would explain why a particle's position only appeared to be dependent on the observer. However, we now know this is not the case. In 2007, quantum physics said goodbye to reality, as new experiments verified the violation of the famous theorem, Bell's inequality, which demonstrated that hidden variable theories were in fact false, and a particle's position is dependent on the observer. In 2011, Koslov Bruckner and Johannes Koffler demonstrated this even affects the macro level. The existence of reality is dependent on there being an observer, and nothing is certain unless an observer makes a measurement. In quantum theory, particles can be in multiple places at once, until the moment you make a measurement, when the particle must end up in only one of those locations, which means nothing is certain until an observer makes a measurement. So in conclusion, what does this all mean? It means the actions of the observer cannot be determined by prior causes, as determinism states. Remember, determinists say that using classical physics, we can know the exact position of every particle and how the laws of the universe work. Therefore, we can't predict exactly what will happen in the future using these laws. However, at the quantum level, it is completely indeterministic, and nothing is certain unless an observer makes a measurement. Physicist Tom Hartfield says, essentially, quantum mechanics tells us that there are things which we cannot know about the future, things which are not predetermined, but happen with some factor of chance or randomness. Although many things in the world may be predicted, everything is not predetermined, and our actions do not unfold mechanically in a manner predetermined since the very moment of the Big Bang. Free will is preserved. So it seems the science does not support determinism. Ever since the Heisenberg uncertainty principle was introduced, we cannot discount the existence of free will. Heisenberg then comes along and proposes the Heisenberg uncertainty principle and says, nonsense. There's uncertainty. You don't know where the electron is. It could be here, here, or many places simultaneously. This, of course, Einstein hated because he said God doesn't play dice with the universe. Well, hey, get used to it. Einstein was wrong. God does play dice. Every time we look at an electron, it moves. There's uncertainty with regards to the position of the electron. So what does that mean for free will? It means in some sense we do have some kind of free will. No one can determine your future events given your past history. There's always the wild card. There's always the possibility of uncertainty in whatever we do.